Bienvenue to Swang to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. Earlier this year, India surpassed China, becoming the world's most populated nation. The country is home to an overwhelmingly young population. More than half of Indians are below the age of 30. A young and cheap workforce could propel India to new heights if there are enough jobs for all. But with rising unemployment rates and not enough decent work, many young Indians turn to government jobs as their only hope for a better future. Our reporter Sadia Rao joins us here in the studio. Thank you for your report, which we're waiting to see. Tell us more about this phenomenon that you've charted for us. So when it comes to youth unemployment, it is and will continue to be one of the biggest challenges for the Indian government. I mean, if we just look at the numbers, um, about 45% of Indians under the age of 25 are unemployed. But the question isn't just about employment, it's also about decent work quality work. A lot of Indians are looking for a security blanket, a social security blanket, which unfortunately they can only have access to through the public sector. And that's why a lot of Indians rush towards government jobs. But the reality at hand is that there's just not enough work for everyone. And as a result, there's a lot of social unrest amongst India's youth. And a lot of analysts consider this to be perhaps India's ticking time bomb. Sadia, thank you very much indeed. Let's then take a look at the report by Sadia Rao. It's 6 a.m. in Delhi's military campus. With the hopes of bearing the title of a soldier, these young men are marching towards their one and only goal. To serve and protect their nation. Chamanchar 19 is one of the lucky few selected for this highly competitive four-year youth employment scheme to join the Indian Army. Its name? Agnipath, Hindi for Path of Fire. Chaman knows what it takes to succeed here. His parents are proud of their son's life goals. Chaman's aim is to be the second generation of his bloodline wearing the Army badge of honour. This is my father. He is my motivation. He is my inspiration. Looking at him motivated me to join the armed forces. Why? I've always lived with him, so I've followed his uniformed life very closely, his discipline, his adventures. Government jobs like these come with privileges, prestige, and most of all, social protection. If tomorrow I'm permanently reinstated in the army, my family will have access to free medical facilities for life. All our groceries will be tax-free, and our family also receives a travel allowance. It's a valuable and respectful job. Whenever you see a soldier going somewhere, you can easily identify them in a crowd of people. In India, there is a frenzy to join the armed forces. In 2022, when the scheme was launched, 3.4 million aspirants competed for only 31,000 positions. But this was only the first battle. Chaman will have to prove his mettle again. First exercise. You have 25 seconds. Take the rifle apart. OK? Get in position. Turn around. If he fares well, he will join the 25% of trainees enrolled permanently in the army after this four-year scheme. Up, 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 up. Every day, India's population is increasing and so is unemployment. So this is a great scheme to give people jobs. If I don't manage to get permanently reinstated in the army, I'll have to train again to find a job. If I manage to make it after four years, I'll have a guaranteed future until the age of 60. Chaman sees Agnipath as a golden opportunity. But for others, the scheme felt deceptive. In June 2022, India's youth reacted with fury over the announcement of Agnipath, 
replacing the old system that guaranteed permanent recruitment. After four years of army training, we'll be thrown away. 75% of us will be excluded. What is this? Will the government give the rest of us jobs after? The armed forces were not the only government department marred by protests that year. The Indian railways faced an angry youth too. Frustration over irregular recruitments had boiled over. These agitations exposed the troubling state of Indian unemployment. The epicenter of this anger was one of the poorest regions in the country, the eastern state of Bihar. A thousand kilometers from New Delhi, in Bihar's capital Patna, lies a flourishing industry of coaching centers, training students for competitive tests to win government jobs. Thousands of young Indians pour into this neighborhood every day. They are vying for low-rung public sector jobs. Police constables, station masters, postmen, public school teachers. For these students, any government job will do. Every street corner is decorated with posters of professors, promising a life of success. <laughs> Students often wait in lines for hours to get a seat. Some classes accommodate up to 2,500 of them at a time. But employment in the public sector is a pipe dream for many. In this narrow alley lies one of the oldest coaching centers in Patna, Platform. Students occupy four floors of classrooms, preparing for different examinations, but particularly for the entrance test of the Indian Railways. Among them is Nitesh Kumar, 23 years old, aiming for the position of an assistant local pilot. This will be his second attempt at the grueling competitive exam. For this job's exam, we have to study 11 subjects. In science, this includes three sections, physics, chemistry, and biology. After that, in social sciences, we study history, civics, and political science. And then there's mathematics, reasoning, economics, and current affairs. Nitesh moved to Patna in 2020 to fulfill his dream of becoming a government employee. To maximize his time at the coaching center, he lives a stone's throw away from his classes. This is Ashish. He lives here too. He's my roommate and classmate. We're preparing for the same position of auto-local pilot. In this 10 square meter room, Nitesh and Ashish have dedicated their entire lives to their studies. These are the books we use to prepare for our exam. This is my science section. Here we have the periodic table. Nitesh's father, a farmer, has paid 140 euros for all his classes. This doesn't include his rent, daily cost of living or the price of study materials. On average, farmers in Bihar earn 85 euros per month. A farmer's son can't become an engineer or a doctor because you have to pay millions in fees to the colleges or universities. If we work in the private sector, we don't have any job guarantee. The owner of the company can lay employees off at any time, whereas in government jobs, if you're selected once, then no one can snatch your position till the age of 60. Like Nitesh, Ashish also belongs to a low-income household. Together, they keep each other on track. Sometimes you don't feel like studying and you start feeling lonely, getting negative thoughts. But since I have a roommate, he motivates me to study too. Despite their efforts, they do not feel supported by the government. National and state authorities are responsible for releasing public sector vacancies on a regular basis. Students depend entirely on these job announcements. A lot of vacancies are announced right before the elections. This is because there's a large population of students in India. Politicians want to lure students with vacancies for their votes. Once the election is over, they only remember the public or the students after five years. 
Many students have committed suicide because the vacancies were not released on time. It is natural that these students will experience tension and depression. Our families have no idea of the hard work required to get these jobs. Starting from their late teens, students arrive in Patna, leaving behind all their families and homes. The professors here are not simply teachers, but also life guides for these impressionable minds. If you have aspirations and a real desire to make it, then you should be able to get a job in a year, that's guaranteed. But for that, you have to work hard, put your heart into it. If you don't want to study, just don't study. You can't force yourself. Ashish Yadav has been teaching science and mechanics at Platform for the past seven years. So far, I think I've taught 20 to 25,000 students in this institute. Teaching is my true passion. That's what motivates me. His work does not end here. Ashish reaches hundreds of other students via the internet. We're going live, sir. Every day, he records classes in the studio. Online courses cost less than in-person classes, allowing students in the deepest pockets of Indian villages to learn from Ashish. When this tool comes in contact, it does the drilling operation. On average, it takes students one to two years to crack the competitive exam. A lot of students do not have access to good coaching institutes or good teachers and don't get proper guidance. These students can make it too, but it will take them four to five years. Quality coaching centers and regular vacancies are far from enough to plug the unemployment gap. Naveen Kumar, the founder of Platform, knows this all too well. Are you preparing the questions? Any difficulty? Have you prepared the questions for tomorrow's test? More than a decade ago, Naveen was a government job aspirant himself. To support his student life, he started selling mock tests for the price of one euro per month. Having experienced financial stress, Naveen sympathizes with today's students. The three students you see here all belong to very simple middle-class families. They're working part-time here. But the competition for government jobs has only increased since Naveen first started platform. In 2019, vacancies were released. For the 35,000 posts, around 12.5 million students signed up. It's obvious that 99.9% .9 of students will not pass the exam. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, you should not be a job seeker, but a job provider. But this is where the government has double standards. If you're saying things like this to students, you must also provide them with adequate means, training and skills from the start. If government schools had taught students properly, then there wouldn't have been a need for coaching centers. Students like Nitesh are heavily dependent on Patna's private education industry. Later in the evening, Nitesh is on his way to a night library. Here, he will continue studying till sunrise. In government schools, teachers don't even know the name of the chief minister of their state or the name of the home minister. So what will they teach the students? I won't turn back on this exam because this is my dream. But if I have to continue like this for another four or five years, I won't manage to survive. We have to sacrifice ourselves fully. Only then do we manage to get selected for a government job. The struggle is our entire life. Nitesh is hanging on to his last threads of hope. With national elections round the corner in 2024, government vacancies are expected to flood the job market. In the world's most populated country, it is estimated that half of the citizens are 25 years old and below. Youth unemployment is and will be India's biggest trial. For these 700 million youth, it's a daily reality.
So Sadia, in the film we notice lots of men and very few women. So where are all the women in this? So unfortunately there's not a lot of women that we encountered in Patna in these coaching centers. And uh, it really represents the larger issue of the lack of female participation in the Indian economy. In 2022, only about 10% of Indian women were working. Uh, if you look at government jobs in 2011, only 11% of government posts were held by women. Uh, as a result, the government pushed a lot of female forward policies like quite liberal um, maternity leaves. In uh, 2021, uh, Be the Bihar government uh, uh, booked out 35% quotas for women uh, to join uh, government jobs. Uh, but it still uh, is not enough for the abysmal uh, state of female participation in the Indian workforce. That's on the work side. On the education side, uh, women have uh, started receiving much more education in India. The rates have gone up. But when it comes to specialized education or extra tools, those are usually left uh, for men. The bet is usually placed on men. If you look at the state of Bihar, for, for example, a lot of families want their boys to become government officials because that allows them to ask for a larger dowry during marriage, uh, something that's illegal in India but uh, still practiced quite often. So all these patriarchal norms, uh, societal norms, are continuing to cause a big gap. It, it continues to exacerbate the gap between men and women when it comes to employment in India. Sadia Rao, thank you very much indeed. You can see Sadia's report again via our website, France24.com. This is Reporters on France24. Stay with us. Most of all, stay safe. That was fantastic. Thank you.